So, uh, hi, Steve. How's it going? Very good, Ollie. Yeah, well, thank you. Good. Thanks for being part of the Architect Tomorrow interview series. It's yeah. great, to, great, great to catch up and speak to you about your background. So, so yeah, let, let's kick off with a bit about you. I mean, I've spent, I was working out that I've spent, I've spent 30 years in industry now, rather right. frankly, across uh, yeah, telecoms, utilities, yeah. financial services, spent yeah, if you include my kind of student apprenticeship, spent kind of 10 years in aviation and flight training. It's a pretty broad experience across okay. you know, across industries, I would say. Yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, I've, I've always been interested in technology from in terms of what it can do for kind of people and teams. Yep. Yeah, I've now, I wouldn't say I've ever been a sort of technologist per se. I mean, right. I kind of you know, held my own, but I've not been a sort of pure technologist ever. Really. Yeah. You know, a typical role for me is what kind of one of two things really. Uh, is either in a sort of advisory consultancy role on sort of things architecture yep. or is um, you know, leading architecture teams by hopefully creating you know, an, an environment where they can kind of do their thing in terms of yep. being effective and hopefully, hopefully enjoyable. That's kind of, kind of so the creating the kind of recipe for success or the framework for successful architecture teams to function. Yeah, exactly. And that's very much a, a, a function of you know the culture of the organization you know its maturity things like that so it tends to tends to vary quite a lot but it's um yeah, that's kind of uh, kind of my thing really okay and how did you kind of get into architecture i mean so talk to us about we kind of said you were doing avionics so how did you kind of journey into the architecture kind of world? How did it, how did you come across it? It's an interest, I mean, I'm, in some ways, I think it's probably quite a classic path. I mean, okay. I, you know, when I, I started out, did my, my degree was engineering, it was electrical and electronic engineering, and I started out being sponsored by a company called Rediffusion Simulation, who made flight simulators. Although my interest was always more in the kind of software and simulation side of it. Right. Uh, and then I kind of sort of progressed through, you know, uh, you know software development, team leading, and then moved through you know, technical architecture, product architecture, solution architecture, enterprise architecture, and then kind of you know, head of architecture looking after architecture team role. So it's kind of, I would, would I say it's a natural progression? Kind of, I, I, I see it in my head anyway, it's quite a, you know, quite a sort of classic yeah, route. way of doing it, classic yeah. going through really, compared to other. Although, uh, I mean, as I've said to you know, some of the, you know, some of the, teams along the way of, of, I find in you know, sort of EA, the enterprise architecture discipline particularly often the best people are the ones that have uh, a measure of business background as well mm -hmm. they've worked either operation in the business or they've been more on the sort of business analysis side perhaps that sort of thing often makes quite a big difference so a more of a rounded sort of individual I'd like to ask people what they think makes a good architect, but I'm also going to ask you about architectural leadership as well, given that that's kind of your mm -hmm. your area. Let's but let's start with yeah. What, what do you think the qualities are that make a make a make a successful architect? The interesting one because I kind of in some ways I look at it as the you know the technology side of it is a given in some ways. Okay. The things that make the dip or is expected, if you like, in a way. In other yeah. Way. So table stakes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the. Um, yeah, that what makes the difference is those uh, is more the business skills, you know, the stakeholder engagement, the mm -hmm. communication, that kind of thing. Yeah, because um, you know, irrespective of the kind of um, type of architecture role, really, but you know, a, a significant part of the role for me, I would say, is kind of almost like um, uh, inside sales or internal consultancy. You have to have a you know, story to tell. Yep, and yep. you hopefully you can tell that story through you. Know, points of view or framework content or roadmaps and you know the things that you've kind of built up or got at your disposal really so that would be that side of it okay uh, i think uh, if i remember the sort of second half of your question yeah the architect architecture architectural leadership i mean i i use um i use the strap line which is maybe a bit cheesy in a way connecting people with architecture okay. but, um, but for me that is actually what it's all about because it, right. it is a you know for me this is kind of communication and collaboration vehicle really okay for me, it's about making our, and again, depends on, you know, varies depending on the sort of culture and maturity of the organisation. It's about making architecture kind of relevant, you know, easily consumable, simple to understand. So, for example, you know, a technology strategy is successful for me if, you know, a wide range of stakeholders can remember two or three things about it. Right. Uh, not necessarily that it's a you know, sort of technically robust or pure strategy with integrity i have a simple kind of yeah why what how kind of literally three slides okay. yeah of why yeah. why bother why should i be 
you know, why should I be interested in doing What's this? What's the kind of driver for change? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, now I'm interested. What is this strategy? Mm -hmm. Okay, got that. Okay, and the how is more your kind of reference architectures, your roadmaps, whether that's capability roadmap or more of a kind of yeah, digital product type work roadmap. So that's kind of the, the kind of thing. Obviously, in terms of the story to tell, you've got to have some kind of sort of architecture framework and content and you know, pictures in a way, if you like. But I find some of the most useful, sort of versatile things are, um, you know, a core set of, of principles. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, they're, 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 you know, sort of very, very useful things and can be used for sort of multiple purposes. Yep. A business capability model is always, always, again, because they, more than anything, because they can be versatile and you can hook lots of things off them. Mm -hmm. Another thing I've used quite a lot is uh, from an art, which is more from the sort of architecture community standpoint, is the is a maturity assessment. Um, more to focus on two or three areas. If you've probably seen the kind of uh, yeah sort of spider diagram outputs from those, but yeah, I, 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 it's that. not so much um, how mature are we now. It's more yeah. what are the two three focus areas over the next period, whether that's three months six months. Um, so my, my last engagement, for example, we picked out. Yeah, the, the the team was very 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 strong architecturally in terms right. of frameworks and content and so on. But the the focus areas were really around architecture communication, um, effective effective governance, I'll call it appropriate mm -hmm. governance, lightweight governance, if you like. Pragmatic, pragmatic, pragmatic. Yeah, yeah. perfect, perfect word. Uh, and also, um, yeah, business alignment. So, uh, which is um, so those were the kind of things to focus on. A lot of the um, architecture content and stuff was really good. You know, that's sort of where you often find. Yeah organizations maybe don't have a lot of that but um so it's interesting isn't it? i mean I, I don't know if you find this but i find that perhaps there's almost a pendulum that swings between architects being very good at kind of understanding the world that they're in and building good repositories and having good content like you say but 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 also on the other hand perhaps the engagement with the business and kind of really understanding what's really going on in the different business units i think it's difficult to kind of do both at the same i think i feel like teams kind of perhaps swing between one and the other kind of clearly having the content is yeah. important because it helps you advise and guide the business. But at the same time, it's hard to do that whilst also being very, you know, embedded perhaps with the, the business units. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, of the content I, I tend to frame more as it's almost um, being able to have a kind of talking point or a conversation. Okay. It's not that this, you know, this model is correct or, this right. is complete, or it, it's, it's a good way to engage in those conversations, which comes back to the, you know, it, it, at a level it's an internal consultancy kind of inside sales kind yeah. of that would be my yeah my take on it i think okay and the the channels architect tomorrow so we often like to talk about what we think we see coming up in the future what do you see the future kind of holding for architecture perhaps in 2021 mm -hmm. it's interesting i think it's kind of two i think it's kind of two parts to it really the way, yeah. I, the way I look at it and it was and i was thinking about the sort of it's a bit like your pro, sort of progression question at the beginning in a way um so I'll frame, one thing i'll sort of frame it as the sort of that progression so about it's probably well, it was over well, over five years ago now that um i was i did a, a leadership course and the question was asked around porsche and uh okay. to their you know what's their what's their brand driver for mm -hmm. their you know, long-term strategy and you thought oh, it must be like performance or luxury or um but it was actually their um their green credentials and, and sustainability, which I thought okay. at the time was, that's that's interesting. I wasn't kind of expecting that. No. If you look at how things have progressed in terms of, um, you know, with the, um, you know, the scandal around emissions and mm -hmm. so the, uh, you know, the anti being up to on electric vehicles and so on, it's, uh, you know, it's, it was actually a very, you know, very, a very good position to have. So I think that's, um, yeah, that's one thing. I think um, another thing was, um, yeah, well, I, I read an article that kind of stuck with me around the, the top, something like the top 10 most successful or successful business transformations of the last decade or something like that. There were some obvious candidates in, so Netflix, you know, yeah. and the kind of things you'd expect. But there were also a good half of the uh, the successful ones were, were traditional organisations, worldwide soft drinks manufacturer, a multinational you know, petrochemical organisation. And the the kind of key, the key trait that they had was, was kind of a... a identified a purpose beyond just returning kind of shareholder value yeah beyond beyond the kind of financial so we talked quite a bit actually with others on architects tomorrow about triple bottom line yes this kind of you know profit purpose purpose being kind of societal or, or planet so people or, or planetary kind of considerations i think it's 
it's quite encouraging to see that shifting and it being more than just sort of lip service and being in a sustainability report, but actually being lived and breathed a lot more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we talked about this quite a bit on a recent panel for ISA that you might have, might, might have seen. I have, I've, I seen, I've have seen it, yeah. And I, I did, I mean, my last, um, I, I was lucky to work with the uh, with Ovo Energy on, on my last engagement and there's a, okay. I've, I've plugged it a few times to fact, but they have, a, you know, obviously Ovo don't have a monopoly on this stuff, but there's a right. Plan Zero, which is their uh, sustainability strategy in terms of um, you know, reduction in emissions and uh, yep. uh, uh, net neutral position by, I think it's 2030 for them. And that's, um, it, yeah, it's well worth the read. I mean, it's publicly available on the internet and you can download it and it's well yep. worth the read actually, both okay. in terms of that, that purpose and that vision, but also you can see some of the um, sort of agile constructs coming through in terms of how they operate and were set up as a business. It's, it's a good, it's a good thing. So that kind of sort of, um, you've got me on the road, I suppose, in terms of where it's going. And then um, the other way I look at it is, um, is in terms of, um, uh, sort of, if you look in terms of pestle analysis, so you obviously, you know, sort of political, economic, technological are kind of, yeah, obviously mm -hmm. very important and central. But I think moving forward, if you look at, um, you know, other aspects of, uh, you know, social, legal and environmental, those will come more to the fore in yeah. terms of, um, you know, architectural concerns, if you like, whether that's, you know, providing consent for, you know, personal data, you know, those kinds of things, or the availability of open data for, you know, citizens and mm -hmm. operations. Or perhaps the transparency of your algorithms and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, I, I, yeah, but there's a great example with AI, whether, you know, in terms of regulation to monitor things like bias, you know, depending mm -hmm. on how the algorithm has been trained or the data it's been, you know, fed. Yep. Um, and also... Uh, accountability in terms of uh, you know the decisions those algorithms make. Um, I think definitely you're right. I think regulation is definitely coming to this space, but clearly it's it's taking a while for governments to kind of catch up with what's what's been going on. The implications of these algorithms are just getting you know bigger and bigger, right? They're taking over more and more of our personal and business lives. So correct, you know. yeah. No, without necessarily knowing even or being transparent, you know, whether that yeah. be or if you take the algorithm that you know the government used for the uh, for the exam. You know, situation over the mm -hmm. summer. similar to companies that provide products in terms yeah. of liabilities. The liabilities should be similar, really, in terms of other. You know, so I've got no idea why I did that or uh, mm -hmm. why I came to that decision. You know, kind of that's not gonna not gonna count. But then you then you'd be yeah. interesting because you'll get into market forces as well. So you'll get right. you'll get those that that that, that do uh, comply, if you like. Whereas you'll get those that will inevitably do it. More of a you more of a cost basis, or maybe not so rigorously, etc. So yeah. it's an it's, yeah, it's an it's an interesting area actually. The architecture role, I think there's um uh, there's kind of a I think it's an interesting one actually because one of the things I focused on on my last engagement was, uh, and I think this will be characteristic is is moving more for I call it traditional classic, but moving mm -hmm. from more of a kind of command and control governance with a big G. Yep. organizational type construct to something more where the better support sort of agile ways of working collaboration you know supporting more more product centric teams really i think will be a key thing so you're moving more towards a kind of individual contributor subject matter expert almost a kind of a playmaker or roving reporter between teams right kind of that you know extolling the virtues of best practice or guidelines and being perhaps more embedded perhaps where the change is happening rather than on high command and controlling from from the yeah top. exactly yeah. right yes exactly yeah. so more 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 kind of more kind of in it if you like yeah that's going to be yeah more of a and it's about it's almost like um if you look at the sort of uh servant leader idea yep it's, it's almost more about yeah providing the platform you know enabling those product teams to do their thing uh, you know remove you know dependencies the need for you know handovers yeah you know, that kind of thing and a lot yeah. of it, a bit like um or almost in the same way that sort of uh your platform operations maybe do in terms of tools and frameworks to yeah or, or perhaps a scrum master does to try and remove impediments maybe the architect moving forward is the one that's trying to clarify the architecture picture and almost make it easier for the the teams doing change to do the right thing longer term yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's big part of it for me and um i think the other thing i've been I, I, relatively recently actually i don't i'm i'm, I'm not sure whether sort of uh, uh you know remote working you know home-based working the move to more flexible modes yeah. of working is, is part of this but 
you know, I do kind of question that sort of enterprise term as well as a, as a thing or an idea, you know, that, that kind of uh, engenders a view of four walls and, and yeah. maybe, I don't know, it's something I'm sort of wrestling okay. with at the moment. I, I, wrote, a, I, I wrote a few years ago, actually, uh, I think 2017, I wrote about uh, how I saw ecosystem architect replacing yeah, yeah well, it's, it's, exactly the same reason that the, yeah. the castle walls have definitely come down and this year it's so true right I mean no one's castle walls really exist in any many cases kind of phys physical location is becoming less and less relevant or certainly has this year right. so, there's so yeah I certainly, I certainly agree with you on that one I haven't quite I haven't quite resolved it yet in my own head but yeah so that's I wonder whether that's uh, okay. yeah, of its time to a degree but so, yeah. okay that's where I can see you know, yeah. two things going Thanks, Steve. The last question for you is, outside of the work and architecture and technology, what, what do you do uh, for fun? What do you do to unwind? Uh, what, what, well, my main, I suppose my main mainstays put at cycling and rowing. Yeah. My, I mean, I still want to say rowing. I take, I take my value for drift down the Thames periodically. <laughs> I'm a bit of a fair weather cyclist, if I'm honest. But uh, yeah, my, I suppose my core sort of passions are cycling and rowing still. Very good. I'll probably rowing and cycling, actually, in that order. <laughs> Well, Steve, thank, thanks very much for, for, for your time and uh, having a chat with us. Oh, right. Great pleasure. No, thanks, for, uh, thanks for inviting me and thanks for the conversation. It's good. Uh, no, no worries. And I look forward to getting you involved in, in some panels and some discussions uh, you know, soon, maybe in the new year, but may, maybe sooner if we can squeeze one in. So, uh, yeah. Right. Look forward to great it. Stuff. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Bye. Bye.